The landscape of rural Guernsey County appears as a patchwork of forested hills, open meadows, and misty valleys threaded by numerous streams. At the heart of this region is Salt Fork State Park, encompassing the woodlands and fields flanking Salt Fork Reservoir. As Ohio's largest state park, Salt Fork boasts recreational facilities to suit nearly every taste. As Salt Fork is the largest state park in the Ohio State Park System. It's operated by the Ohio Department of Natural Resources and has a roughly 3,000 acre lake uh, and about 20,000 acres of land altogether. Planning was begun in the 1950s for Salt Fork Lake. There ended up being interest in developing as a recreational area. The dam was being completed from 1962 to 1968, culminating with the opening of the Salt Fork Lodge in 1972. Salt Fork is Ohio's largest state park and is certainly a beautiful representation of the Appalachian foothills. Millions of visitors have enjoyed the park over the years. However, it is equally important to take a moment to pause and reflect on what has come before. Hi, my name is David Thompson, and I've been with the Ohio Department of Natural Resources since 1997, and I'm a historian here at Salt Fork State Park. Part of my duties are to bring information about the past to the present so visitors can enjoy some of the heritage that is here at the park. Over 200 years ago, the first settlers arrived and carved homesteads from a seemingly endless forest. Generations passed, homes built, and farms cultivated. At one time, there were three communities, at least six one-room schoolhouses, and several small cemeteries on park property. From 1960 to 1967, the state of Ohio purchased over 150 parcels of land for development of the park and lake. Across this small bay was Allen Cemetery. The church was located on the opposite side of Route 14, above the cemetery. The Methodist Episcopal Church was the first church organized in Jefferson Township in 1824 under the direction of Reverend John Graham. Services were initially held in the home of William Allen, one of the first settlers to own property in the township. He needed the land for the church building in 1839. The congregation named it Allen's Church or Allen's Chapel. The building cost $600. By the mid-1900s, the church society had dissolved and the building housed Valley Grange number 1586. The building was raised during construction of the park. Road 14 roughly follows former County Road 11. Plants typical for cemeteries still grow in the location of the old cemetery. With development of the lake in the 1960s, the graves were removed and reinterred at Pleasant Hill Cemetery. 
Old County Road 50 intersected nearby and a concrete bridge is visible when water levels are low where it crossed Salt Fork Creek. The Salt Fork Bridge is where State Route 285 crosses Salt Fork near the intersection with Fogel Road. This bridge was once the site of the Salt Fork Covered Bridge, one of the numerous covered bridges which dotted the park at one time. The original covered bridge collapsed in 1937 under the weight of a heavy tractor. It was replaced by a modern steel and concrete span. The original bridge was the site of a brief July 1863 skirmish between Confederate General John Hunt Morgan and Union General James Shackelford during the famous Morgan's Raid. Union forces had been trailing Morgan's roughly 600 cavalrymen throughout southern Ohio and had briefly engaged in a skirmish in nearby Old Washington, just a few miles south of this location. Morgan's men fled north along present-day State Route 285, then known as the Winchester Road. Morgan parted ways with Shackelford at the bridge and soon rejoined his troops, escaping to the northeast. John and Fanny Parker were the first generation of Parkers to live in Jefferson Township. They established a farm on this location in 1817. Their son, John S. Parker, built the family home in 1867. The Parkers raised sheep primarily, as well as other livestock, on their 257-acre farm for five generations. The state of Ohio purchased the farm from John W. and Eva Parker in 1966 for development of the park. The foundation stones of the home and several outbuildings can be seen. Several barns were located on the opposite side of the road. In 1837, Benjamin Kennedy purchased the land and built the stone house with a summer kitchen and root cellar. The Irish stonemason quoted him a price of $500 to build the uh, stone house. And he realized he had underbid. He, he was not making a profit. So he came back and offered to build the root cellar for an additional $100 in order to recoup his losses bringing the total cost of that stone house, summer kitchen, and root cellar in at $600. It was owned by Kennedys until 1966. The Kennedys did not always live there. Um, somewhere along the line, they moved into Cambridge, so they would rent the house. I'm Shirley Livingston, and uh, I am the docent trainer for the Stonehouse Museum, uh, the docents who volunteer their time to take, do tours at that stone house. My husband and I uh, both serve as members of um, the board of um, the Friends of the Kennedy Stone House. So I'm the secretary of that, and, um, and then I've also morphed into being the docent chairman and trainer. My name's Nancy Carney. I'm related to the Kennedys. My grandfather was Don Kennedy and I spent all my summer vacations here at the Stone House growing up. This was a working farm. There were cattle and sheep, and at first my grandpa had pigs, later on he didn't. He raised hay and wheat for the cattle. It was kind of primitive here in the house. We didn't have any running water because the pump didn't work. We had no electricity. We had an outhouse. If you did the laundry at all, you'd have to get a giant tub, heat the water on the stove, take it out to the tub, get a washboard and scrub your clothes and then wring them out. It's very difficult to wring out clothes by yourself and uh, hang them on the line to dry. Uh, the kerosene lamps were quite interesting because you'd have to remember to trim, trim the wicks or the flame would go very high and scare you to death. <laughs> uh, it would get dark early and you'd usually go to bed pretty early because 
there wasn't much to do other than sit by the kerosene lamp. And it was difficult to see in the lamplight, really, to play cards or to do anything. So you'd get up early and you'd go to bed early. <laughs> When we started restoring that place, there was nothing left. It was totally gutted. I mean, the kids had burned the floor. They, the floor upstairs was gone. It was missing. There was nothing left, absolutely. And time marched on and a tree fell on the roof and um, it, it just was nothing but four walls. Polly Cornish and her son Ron Cornish began a campaign of fundraisers and applying for grants, getting volunteers to help them restore that stone house to its former glory. That's the house that we see restored and returned to the way it was at the Salt Fork State Park today. The house stands as a monument to the past. Hello, my name is Cindy Koss and I'm the naturalist here at Salt Fork State Park. Um, some of the things that I do at the park um, include running the Nature Center. Um, I also go to Wolf Run State Park and do programs there. Um, a lot of the programs that I do include archery and uh, canoeing. We have uh, tracks programs that we do. We do printing with nature and of course we do our Bigfoot hikes. One of my favorite places to be is the Morgan's Knob Trail. It's not a really, really long trail. That trail is the best one to, to go and hike. When you're starting to hike, you're in a conifer forest. You walk through the conifer forest and you're able to see the trees that's been planted many, many years ago by the, the CCC and the WPA. And it's, it's really serene in that area and then it breaks out into a deciduous forest so you're actually able to see the hardwood trees, the leaves and the variety of species of animals in that area. The trail's been completely repaired at Hosex Cave now and you can get back to the cave. It's such a beautiful area when the water's flowing especially in the springtime it's just a very nice area to go and just kind of watch the waterfall. Um, it is one of our most dangerous areas in the park, unfortunately, so you have to be real careful and make sure you stay on the trail. The trail's not very long, but it's really a nice, serene, pretty area. One of the fun things here at the park that I like to do is the history tour. It's a self-guided uh, driving tour. So you go to the camp office or the, the main office of the park and you pick up the tour map and you're able to drive around to the different spots and at each spot it gives you a, a um, list of what you're looking at and it just basically gives you the history of the park itself and what the history was before the park became the, the state park. We have a lot of things going on, a lot of areas to cover, a lot of things to see and do, and keep you busy all summer long.